We saw earlier that the greatest common divisor of 72 and 162 was 18. This was something that I showed in another video. And to show that, we looked at the Euclidean algorithm. And so just to kind of review how that went, we started by writing the larger of the two numbers that we were looking at, 162, as uh, equal to 2 times 72 plus 18 in this case. And then I wrote 72 equals 4 times 18, and then I had a remainder of 0. And once you get to that position where you have a remainder of 0, then this number right here is the GCD, the greatest common divisor. And so something else that I want to show you is a way of rewriting the greatest common divisor in terms of the two numbers that are given to us. So look at this equation right here. So if we look at that, I can solve this for 18, which was the greatest common divisor, and that would be 162 minus 2 times 72. And if we look at this, we see that it's a way of rewriting 18 as a linear combination of these two numbers. Uh, to write it more explicitly, I could say it's taking 1 of 162 and subtracting 2 of 72. And this is a linear combination. We also saw that the greatest common divisor of 2,171 and 2,613 was 13. And to show that, and I did this again in detail in an earlier video, uh, we write 2,613 as 1 times 2,171 plus a remainder of 442. And then 2,171 was 4 times 442 plus a remainder of 403. 442 was then 1 times 403 plus 39, 403 was 10 times 39 plus 13, and finally 39 was 3 times 13 with a remainder of 0. And when you get to the remainder of 0, that tells you that this number right here is the greatest common divisor, 13. But I'm not interested in the greatest common divisor, I want to look at linear combinations. So to do that, I'm going to number each of these equations. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, just so I can talk about them. And I'm going to look at the first equation that has a non-zero remainder. That's this equation 4, has a remainder of 13. 13 is the GCD. So I'm going to rewrite it as 13 equals, and I'm going to bring this over to the other side, so I would have 403 minus 10 times 39. And I'm going to plug in using a substitution here with these other equations until I can rewrite this as a linear combination of these two numbers right here. So now I'm going to look at equation 3. I see 39 right here. So 39 is 442 minus 403. So I can plug that in here. So I have 403 minus 10 times, and instead of the 39, I'm going to write 442 minus 403. Okay, so at this point, I have a 403 here and a 403 here. If I wanted to, I could combine these, so maybe we'll do that. So I would have a negative 10 distributed here, which would make that a positive 10, and that would be 11. So I would have 11 times 403 minus 10 times 442. Okay, so now I can go to this equation here, and I have 403... Uh, written in terms of these other two things. So instead of this 403 here, I'm going to rewrite that. So 403 would really be 2,171 minus 4 times 442. And then I still have minus 10 times 442. And so again, I have some terms I can combine. I have some 442s that I can combine. So let's rewrite this a little bit. So I have I'll distribute this first. I have 11 times 2,171. And then I have 11 times 4. That's going to be 44 times 442. Minus 10 times 442. And so I would have, finally, 13 equal to 11 times 2,171. And then I have a 44 and a 10 here. That's going to be a 54. 54 times 442, and I'm almost done here. I have the 2,171, that's one of the two numbers, and I can get rid of this 442 using equation one. 
442 is 2613 minus 2171. So if you notice, I'm kind of rewriting each of these equations by solving for the remainder and then plugging in over here. So in this case, I would get 13 equals 11 times 2171 minus 54 times, and now instead of 442, I'm gonna write 2613 minus 2171, and so I would get 13 equals, and now I can distribute 11 times 2171 minus 54 times 2613 plus 54 times 2,171, and I'm almost done. Let's combine like terms here. So I have a 2,171 that shows up in two different places, and I would have 54 plus 11, and if I do 54 plus 11, that will give me 65. So I have 65 times 2,171 minus 54 times 2,613. And so this now is a linear combination, and it relates the greatest common divisor as a linear combination of the two numbers that I had up here, 2,171 and 2,613. So uh, it turns out this ends up being very useful in abstract algebra, and it's something that you can always do. So let's look at that. So I'm going to look at the theorem that says if a and b are integers and they're not both zero, and if d is the greatest common divisor of a and b, then there exist integers m and n such that d, the greatest common divisor, is m times a plus n times b. Okay, so if we wanted to look at a proof of this theorem, uh, we could go through it in detail. It's very similar to how we proved the Euclidean algorithm. In fact, we're just gonna kind of do it in reverse. So for the Euclidean algorithm, remember we had A written as, we call them quotient and remainder, uh, Q naught times B plus R naught. And then we would bring the B down and write that as Q1 times R naught plus R1. We kind of did this before with the actual numbers in the, in the uh, previous slides. And then you keep going, and you have R0, and then R1. Eventually, then, after you do this a bunch of times, you get down to R n minus 3 equals Q n minus 1, R n minus 2 plus R n minus 1. And then you keep going until finally you get down to a step here, which has no remainder. And when you get down here, where there are no more remainders, that tells you then that we have... Uh, this number here, Rn, as the greatest common divisor. So we want to kind of go in reverse. In other words, we want to be able to rewrite the remainders in terms of the other things. Like, for instance, Rn here. I could rewrite Rn in terms of the previous things. So I had Rn as Rn minus 2 minus Qn Rn minus 1. And then I have r n minus 1 here. So r n minus 1 I can rewrite in terms of these things. And you kind of keep substituting that way. So I'll just show you here. Then I would write r n equals r n minus 2 minus q n times. And instead of r n minus 1, I would write r n minus 3 minus q n minus 1 r n minus 2. And you would keep working backwards in this way until you were able to rewrite Rn in terms of the original A and B. So the first step, you'd have Rn in terms of Rn minus 1 and Rn minus 2. The second step, you'd have Rn in terms of Rn minus 2 and Rn minus 3. And you would kind of keep working backwards until eventually you'd have Rn in terms of A and B. And that would be the linear combination that you're looking for. Okay, so it looks like we have uh, this theorem here, which I didn't do a formal proof for, but it, it makes sense if you think about working the Euclidean algorithm backwards. But remember that it says that there exist integers m and n. It doesn't say that m and n are unique. So in fact, I'll show you right now that uh, an example where they're not unique. So uh, if we have the greatest common divisor of 493 and 899. So first, let's figure out what that is. We'll use the Euclidean algorithm working the normal way. So we have 899 equals 1 times 493 with a remainder of 406. 
Then 493 is 1 times 406 plus 87. 406 is 4 times 87 with a remainder of 58. 87 is 1 times 58 with a remainder of 29. And then finally, 58 is 2 times 29 with a remainder of 0. Once we get a remainder of 0, we know that this number here, the uh, 29, must be the greatest common divisor. So there it is. Okay, so now what we want to do is try and get a linear combination. So to do that, it helps, like I did in the previous slides, to rewrite each of these equations by solving for the remainder. So that would be something like this. And remember, the last equation is the one that we're not going to use because that has a remainder of 0. And so now we have to go and do a little bit of algebra. So to start, I'm going to start with the 29 equals 87 minus 58. Then I'm going to substitute in for 58. So 58 is 406 minus 4 times 87. So that would that look something like this. And if I wanted to, I could combine the 87s here. I would have um, 5 you know, total because I would have 4 plus the 1. And then I can substitute in for 87. And that would be from this equation here. I'm kind of working backwards here. So 87 is 493 minus 406. So that gets in place of this 87 right here. And then I can combine the 406s. So remember, I distribute the 5 here. I would get negative 5 times this. And then a negative 1 here makes a negative 6. And I can substitute in for the 406. That's 899 minus 493. That's using this uh, first equation up here and collect the like terms and end up getting 29 equals 11 times 493 minus 6 times 899 and that's a linear combination in terms of the original two numbers here the 493 and the 899. In fact we see in terms of the theorem that the 11 is playing the role of the m and the negative 6 is playing the role of the n. Now it turns out and you can verify this on your own uh, that there's another way to do this. I could rewrite uh, 29 also as a linear combination with these two numbers, but now I'm going to use m as negative 888 and n as 487. So keep in mind what the theorem is saying. It's saying that it's possible to rewrite the greatest common divisor as a linear combination of a and b, but those numbers that are in front of the a and the b, the m and the n, are not unique. There's more than one way to do it. Now this idea of rewriting the greatest common divisor as a linear combination of A and B might not seem very profound, but it turns out that it's very helpful in a lot of proofs in abstract algebra. So we're going to see this come up again and again.